Well, hello. I've been meaning to do a video about my 4x5 setup for quite a while now. I've never really got round to explaining the uh, setup and the equipment I use. So today's the day. So let's get started and have a look at the basic equipment I've got. First off, I have my camera. Now, this is an Intrepid a 4x5 model, and this is the Mark III. Now, I've only just received this, uh, well, a month or two ago, and I've not, uh, not used it yet in anger because the weather's been so foul. I've used the Mark II for a couple of years. Now, this is a very simple, lightweight field camera, superb for carrying all day long. There's absolutely, well, there's no weight in it whatsoever, about the same weight as a DSLR without a lens. Very simple camera to use. You've just got a few basic movements. Yeah, so you can do the front rise and front fall on this standard here. And then you can also tilt the lens. Now this gives you the depth of field you need for many large format shots. Without that, you're gonna struggle for depth of field. So a little bit of tilt goes a long way, just helps you get everything in focus for landscape shots. Very simple, like I said. I use that all the time when I'm shooting my 4x5. I've had other models, but this has definitely been my favorite. Now, the next most important thing in terms of the outfit is gonna be the lenses. Now, I use three different lenses with my 4x5. I have a wide angle lens here. This is a 28 millimeter equivalent, quite a, a hefty lens, quite a big piece of glass and metal. Lovely quality though. Only f8, so yeah, quite a small aperture for a maximum. Bit difficult to focus at times, but yeah. Next lens is my most commonly used lens. This is the standard lens. Now this equates to about 45 millimeters in full frame terms. This is a 5.6 aperture maximum. Very easy to focus, very bright on the screen. Absolutely love this lens. It's my favorite by a long way. If I had to carry one lens, it'd be a no brainer. I'd just take that lens with me. Now, the next lens is my long lens. Now I used to carry a 300 millimeter lens. Um, it was nice, it gave me the 85 millimeter equivalent, but it's a little bit of a push on the Intrepid. It's a little bit long, the bellows are at maximum extension. And also when they're fully extended, it tends to wobble around a little bit. So I prefer this 240 millimeter. It's about sort of a 70 to 75 millimeter equivalent. Super sharp, super light, easy to focus, absolutely fantastic. And as an added bonus, that works on my eight x 10 camera as well on the rare occasion I get out with that one. Next up is film. Now film comes in boxes like this. You typically get about 20 sheets or 25 sheets in a box, or actually 10 sheets now with Kodak. And yeah, it's packed light tight, obviously. You don't want any light getting in there. And you need a changing bag, just get my changing bag, to be able to put the film into the film holder. Now this is my changing bag. It's basically just two bags an inner bag and an outer bag made out of impervious light resistant material. And into that you take the film holder. Now the film holder holds two sheets of film. So if I just pop that open, okay, this is a used one. Sheet of film in there, another one. Old expired film I use for test purposes. Let me just show you what the film actually looks like. Okay. Okay, so that's your sheet of film. Fairly large, as you can see. That's why you get such good image quality. Beautiful for printing from either scanning or doing normal traditional darkroom prints. So the film just slides in, goes into the holder, and the cover goes in there and you're ready to shoot. Obviously all that is done in the dark bag so it doesn't get exposed to light. So that's your film holder. Now typically I would carry about four or five of those and have additional ones in the car. I don't shoot masses of film when I'm out with large format. I really take my time and consider my compositions in great detail. So yep, buy those about 10, 20 pounds each used. Make sure you get good ones and there's no light leaks. The next thing is my light meter. Now, as you can see, these cameras are very basic. Uh, even the most sophisticated models, nothing comes with a light meter, obviously. It has to be done manually. So I have this Siconic. Now I use this Siconic for all my film photography, medium format, large format, and sometimes 35 millimeter as well. And it's a spot meter. So essentially what I do with this is I will take light readings from specific parts of the scene, read them off on the display, and work out my exposure from there. I'm not gonna go into detail on that. I'll do a separate video on how to 
use light meters, spot meters in particular, to get the correct exposure. But that's an essential piece of equipment for me, particularly if you're shooting with slide film. Slide film is, is very intolerant of exposure errors. You've got to get it right in camera. Right, next thing is my little loop. Now, a loop is just a little magnifier. Now, the magnifier is used on the back of the camera to see that everything is in focus. So when you're focusing on a scene, you've got everything set up the way you like, you actually put this little device, this little magnifier up to the glass and you go around the image checking for sharpness. If it's not sharp, you readjust the focus. You may do some front tilt or some rise or some fall just to get everything the way you want it. Keep rechecking with that device there. Now that brings us to another thing, the, the famous thing you see with large format photography, which is the dark cloth. Now this is the the bag which goes over the camera. Now this goes over the back of the camera, like so. Let me just try and show you this. Not so easy without a tripod to demonstrate it on, but I'll have a go. There we go. So it's in a bag now. And essentially you are going to look like a total idiot while you look through the camera and focus it. It's lovely and dark in here now. A bit pointless talking to you like that. Though lovely and dark in here now and I can uh, focus it up quite easily, providing there's not too much uh, extraneous light getting into the bag itself. Right, what next? Because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, I have plus one, or I think plus, plus two, plus two reading glasses. Now they allow me to get underneath the dark cloth and see without using the loop. And the reason I use that is because I can get a rough estimate of focus before I go in with the loop, which is a bit more precise, a bit more fiddly. Uh, so I like to get things fairly close before I start using the loop. A cable release. You're going to need a cable release for your lenses. Because the lenses, let's pick this one up here, are fixed to the camera. You haven't got a shutter release like you have with a modern camera. It's actually on the lens itself. So if I cock the lens, fire it with a cable release. Cock the lens again. Okay. I always do a test firing before I actually make the exposure, just to make sure everything's working properly. All right, well, that's just about it, but I am gonna show you one more thing I use with my large format camera. I picked this up last year. It's particularly useful for me. And this is a six by 12 roll film back. This one's by Horseman. Particularly nice make, very, very well made. Beautiful piece of equipment. And that allows me to use roll film, just normal 120 medium format film. And it gives me a six by 12 exposure. That's twice the size of a typical Hasselblad or Bronica SQ image. It's absolutely gorgeous. If I can find out how to get the slide back in. It's absolutely gorgeous to work with because you get a two to one panoramic. Film just goes in the back, clips onto the back of the camera and away you go. Really simple and easy to use. A lot cheaper to shoot with roll film than it is with sheet film and you get six shots on a roll. So you can rattle away much more quickly. It's a bit like using a big medium format camera. Right, so that is my basic camera outfit. Very much a quick gallop through the system. Um, I will do uh, other videos where I concentrate a bit more on the likes of processing and developing the images, how I uh, work on my black and whites and colors, how I meter for them. And uh, I may even look at doing a video where I take the whole process through from loading the film, shooting, developing, post-processing, scanning, and outputting it to the printer. So yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.